Festus, Missouri, and we're here inside Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri with another Watchman video broadcast. You know, we had our uh, homecoming today and uh, had some good people, had some good visitors here with us today, and I'll tell you, you guys, you guys missed out on it, because not only did we have some good preaching, right? Yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, we had some good eating. In fact, I was gonna, I was gonna bring a plate up here of bratwurst. I don't know if anybody outside of St. Louis knows what bratwurst is, but we had, we had bratwurst and uh, grilled hot dogs and grilled hamburgers and all kinds of salad and all kinds of pies and cakes. We just had a wonderful time here this year, and this is our Watchman video broadcast special that we're doing live here in the sanctuary of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri. We want to invite you. We're going to try to do this again next year, probably in August. So set aside some time, get in contact with me, let me know if you guys plan on coming, and when would be a good time for you guys to be here, and we'll try to do this again next year, invite all of our watchers, uh, maybe from all over the world, maybe some of you people that live in Germany, or South Africa, or Australia, would hop on a boat or a plane and come on out here, and uh, we would treat you pretty well here, so long as Obama lets us in. I have not dealt with this on any of the broadcasts since we've been doing this since January, it's an issue that's come up several times. It's an issue that uh, a lot of news outlets have dealt with. Some of them refuse to do it. Even Lou Dobbs on CNN has talked about it. Uh, I haven't dealt with it much on this broadcast, but something caught my attention this afternoon. This is from World Net Daily, and uh, they actually, supposedly, there is a lawsuit that is being filed on behalf of a, uh, an army officer, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but this is a, uh, an article from World Net Daily it says, is this really smoking gun of Obama's Kenyan birth? The attorney files motion for authentication or authentication of alleged 1960 certificate from Africa. California or attorney Orly Tate has filed a number of lawsuits demanding proof of Barack Obama's eligibility to serve as president, has released a copy of what purports to be a Kenyan certification of birth, and has filed a new motion in U.S. District Court for its authentication. The document lists Obama's parents as Barack Hussein Obama and Stanley Ann Obama, formerly Stanley Ann Dunham, the birth date uh, as August 4, 1961, and the hospital of birth as Coast General Hospital in Mombasa, Kenya. No doctor is listed, but the alleged certificate bears the signature of the Deputy Registrar of Coast Province, Joshua Simone Kuya. It was allegedly issued as a certified copy of the original in February 1964. World Net Daily has, was able to obtain other birth certificates from Kenya for purposes of comparison, and the form of the documents appear to be identical. Last week, a counterfeit document purporting to be Obama's Kenyan birth certificate made the rounds of the Internet, but was quickly, quickly determined to be fraudulent. The new document released by Tate's bears none of the obvious traits of a hoax. Tate's told World Net Daily that the document came from an anonymous source who doesn't want his name known because, quote, he's afraid for his life. Well, I said, say so. Tate's motion filed yesterday in the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California requests the purported evidence of Obama's birth, both the alleged birth certificate and foreign records not yet obtained, be preserved from destruction, ask for permission to legally request documents from Kenya, and get this, seeks a subpoena for deposition from Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Uh, those Clintons are in de depositions a lot, it seems like, and uh, they don't always tell the truth when they're being deposed, but they, they seek to depose uh, Hillary Clinton for some reason uh, going along with this. Uh, Tate said, I filed the motion with the court asking for expedited discovery, which would allow me to start subpoenas and depositions even before Obama and the government responds, Tate told WorldNet Daily. She said, I'm asking the judge to give me the power to subpoena the documents from the Kenyan embassy and to require a deposition from Hillary Clinton so they will be forced to authenticate the birth certificate. She said, I'm forcing the issue where Obama will have to respond, she said. Before, they said, you don't have anything back in your claims, Tates explained. Now I have something. In fact, I have posted on the internet more than Obama has. My birth certificate actually has signatures. Who in here has, a, has an actual copy of your original birth certificate? Anybody? Okay. Supposedly, all that Obama will put on the internet or show people is a—it's uh, a document from the state of Hawaii. It's called a um, 
certificate of live birth or something like that. It has no doctor's signature on it, anything like that. And the whole thing revolves around, and, and you have to ask yourself, why is this important? The whole thing revolves around, is Obama eligible to be president of the United States? There is a controversy. The controversy is, he claims he was born in the state of Hawaii. There are others who are claiming that he was not born in Hawaii, he was actually born in Kenya. Why does that matter? Because if he was born in Kenya, he is not legally allowed to be the president of the United States. And I'll get to that part uh, here in just a, li a little bit. Uh, she said, Tate's, the uh, World Net Daily story goes on to say, Tate's most celebrated case involved a military officer, Major Stephen Cook, who was, whose order to deploy to Afghanistan was revoked when he challenged Obama's eligibility to hold office. That case has now been refiled in federal court in Florida, raising the specter of a class action claim among members of the military that their orders aren't valid because of questions surrounding Obama's constitutional eligibility. I don't know if you heard about this or not, but what happened was this Major Cook decided that he was being asked to go out to Afghanistan. He decided that he didn't want to go, and he is making the claim that he is questioning Barack Obama's eligibility to become president of the United States. And if Obama is not the president of the United States, then Cook is not authorized by the Constitution of the United States to obey the orders of the Commander-in-Chief of the Army. That's his claim. So Cook says, I'm not going to Afghanistan until you show me that he is an American citizen and he has a right to be president. As soon as he stood his ground, they rescinded his orders to go to Afghanistan. They said, oh, don't worry about it, you don't have to go. And since then, a lawsuit has been dropped. But now she's refiling the lawsuit, saying that she has evidence that it looks like Obama was born in Kenya. And so the, the article is saying that there is a fear now that if she refiles on Cook's behalf, that it would become part of a larger lawsuit that would include a whole lot more members of the armed forces saying we're not doing anything until we find out whether or not the guy who's supposed to be giving us orders is obligated and qualified to give us the orders. Now here's the only reason, now like, like I say, I have not I have not dealt with this on any of our broadcasts. I've, I, I've just kind of been waiting to see this looks like a legitimate versus I don't know I've never been to Kenya I know somebody who's from Kenya and I'll probably ask them does this look real to you but let's see what plays out in the court and let's see what happens but here's here's the thing on this that I think we all need to get a hold of if Obama is not a constitutionally legal United States citizen in other words the Constitution says that he can't he can't just be an American citizen he has to be born in the United States of America in order to be president. If he's not been, if it's proven that he's not been born in the United States of America, that disqual we have a mess on our hands. Would you agree with that? Say amen. We have a mess on our hands. If he's not the president and can't be, every act that he's approved of and ordered is disqualified. Okay? And I want to tell you something, this, this, this president has not sat on his hands since he became office. As soon as, as, since he came into office, as soon as he got into office, he immediately starts, the first thing he does is he's releasing all the prisoners from Gitmo, and he's doing all these things, all these bills that have been acted, all the stimulus money that's been sent out, had to do so by his approval. The question I ask is, if he's not the president, and it's proven he's not the president, what happens to all this money? What happens to all these bills that he's signed and enacted? What happens to all these direct presidential orders that he's done? What happens, what happens to the country if it's proven that Barack Obama cannot be the president of the United States? I think we're in trouble. I think that we're going to be in big trouble. And I'll explain more of that as we move along. How many of you shop here? What can you get at Walmart? Huh? J Japanese stuff. Chinese stuff. Cheap Chinese stuff. 
You can buy you can buy eyeglasses. That, well, these eyeglasses are from Walmart. You can get tires at Walmart. You can get Coca-Cola at Walmart. What else can you get? Come on. What, for, you, can you get a four-wheeler? You're kidding me. There is a Walmart and, and and oh, I was let me do that. Let me let me just in case you don't know what kind of people we are. This is the kind of hat that shows up at our church. Okay? Camouflage Super X. Now that's not some movie you watch, right? That's that's ammo. Yeah. Ammo that you can't get anymore. You can buy ammunition at Walmart. Apparently the Walmart just south of here in DeSoto, Missouri carries four-wheelers. I didn't know that. Okay? Redneck stuff. Amen? Okay. Uh, pretty soon... You're going to be able to get a swine flu shot at Walmart. This story is from Reuters. Uh, Walmart Stores Incorporated is, is discussing, disgusting, discussing with U U.S. health officials of the possibility of putting vaccination sites at some of its stores for an H1N1 swine flu inoculation campaign this fall. A company official said on Thursday, federal officials met with Walmart executives on Wednesday in Arkansas to discuss the issue. Dr. John Aguanabi, whoever that is, president of health and wellness. I didn't know, I didn't know Walmart had a president of health and wellness, but they've got one for Walmart U.S. Told public health leaders at a conference in Orlando, he said, "Quote: We're in discussions with the CDC and others in local and state departments to see what role we might play." He said, "It might be, it, it might be we are a site. It may be uh, help with logistics and with supply chain." Aguanabi said 140 million people walk through the doors of its 4,000 U.S. stores each week. U.S. health advisors um, have said about half of the U.S. population should be vaccinated against H1N1. I am not. I am not. I will not get a swine flu shot. Uh, I won't stand in line. I won't do it. Uh, I can't tell you what to do, but I'm not going to get one. Uh, up to 160 million doses of flu vaccine will be available for the start of the campaign in mid-October. The H1N1 swine flu, characterized by mild symptoms in most patients, is now so widespread that the World Health Organization has stopped counting cases. Speaking at the National Association of County and City Health Officials, this is funny, the National Association of County and City Health Officials, their initials spell NACHO, N-A-C-C-H-O. Speaking at the Nacho Conference, Aguanobi also said Walmart is planning to be a site this fall for seasonal flu vaccinations administered by a third party at stores in most parts of the country. So Walmart's getting in on the deal. You can save money and live better. The other thing about this, now, I don't know, maybe I'm just too conspiratorial for my own good. I don't trust this thing, I don't trust what's being made of it, and I don't trust the vaccine, not for a second. I am not, I am not necessarily opposed to vaccines, I'm not. Uh, but I, for some reason, this doesn't sit well with me, and we're already looking at a situation, in fact, check, check this story out here, this is from CNN in Washington, military planning for possible H1N1 outbreak. Now why would the military want to get involved in swine flu shot? How many of you have ever had a flu shot before? And it's pretty standard. You go to the health clinic or you go to your doctor. Uh, there is a uh, Barnes Hospital uh, here in the St. Louis area. You can walk in there. They have clinics. People walk in by the thousands every day in neat, orderly lines. And they walk up there and they fill out a little card saying they're healthy. And they get their shot in two seconds or less and you're out the door. But for some reason, and you have to remember, this all goes back to things that we have learned earlier. Things we've talked about on this broadcast things about how the United States government or the Pentagon has pulled back troops from different places in, in different locations overseas and brought them into this country to help with domestic issues that right now don't even exist. But it just seems like to me, and plus the idea that lawmakers are still, they're still debating this bill, it's in a committee right now, to turn some of our old military bases in this country into crisis emergency centers. They're going to retrofit them basically into camps is what they're going to do. And they brought back uh, whole units of the Army to be stationed right here in the United States of America for some catastrophe they, that they say might occur on, uh, on the soil of the United States of America. 
And that kind of makes people nervous. I don't know about you, but it makes me nervous to think that we're going to have army guys patrolling the streets of the United States of America. Number one, it's against the law. It's against the Constitution, and it should be. And anybody in the military will tell you that military people are not qualified to be policemen. Policemen are trained to keep the peace. Military people are trained to kill people. And there's a difference. But now we have this story here. In fact, let me read the story. The U.S. military wants to establish regional teams of military personnel to assist civilian authorities in the event of a significant outbreak of the H1N1 virus this fall, according to the Defense Department officials. The proposal is awaiting final approval from Defense Secretary Robert Gates. He, of course, he's going to approve it. The officials will not be identified because the proposal from U.S. Northern Command's uh, General Victor Runart has not been approved by the Secretary. The plan calls for military task force to work in conjunction with the Federal Emergency Management Association. We're from the government and we're here to help you, is what that means. There's no final decision on how the military effort would be manned, but one source said it would likely include personnel from all branches of the military, like the Air Force, like they're going to need flyovers to make sure. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, I think this is about making people take a flu shot. Now, it's one thing to say now, there's an outbreak of a flu, there's an outbreak of something. If you get this vaccination, if you get this inoculation, you'll be fine. Do you want it? So far, the, the flu shots have been voluntary, with the exception of in my house. My wife makes me get a flu shot. And I cry all the way down there. So, I live in a dictatorship in my house when it comes to flu shots. Okay? But I am standing my ground on the swine flu shot. I don't want it. I don't trust it. And I'm not getting one. Is anybody here with me? Amen. I'm not getting one. I don't trust it. And supposedly now, for our own well-being, for our own safety, for, our own, for, for us, they're doing it for us. Remember, everything the government does is for us, the Americans. Because they care about us. And so, you know, if something should happen and there's an outbreak and people don't want to get the flu shot, well, we're going to coerce them into getting the flu shot or to use military teams to do it. Now, just remember, there's a lot more people in this country that wear hats like this. Okay? Just keep that in mind. That's not a threat by Pastor Mike Hoggard. It's just a wake-up call. There's some very scary things going on in our country. Scary in that I kind of like being able to drive to work every day, I kind of like, you know, using my cell phone. I kind of like getting on the internet, looking up stories and talking on the telephone. I kind of like going to the grocery store and getting groceries and eating food and just having life the way it is right now. I kind of like that. But I'm afraid. I'm afraid it's not going to last too much longer in this country. There are a lot of people in this country that are not happy. And they shouldn't be happy with how things are going in Washington, D.C., how things were in the state of Missouri, our capital is Jefferson City. There's a lot of people not happy with what's going on in Jefferson City. And people are getting kind of nervous. And so I caught this story, and I'm going to have some videos that go with it. Some of the things that are going on around the country that are just kind of letting you know that the people are not as happy as what the government tries to make it out. Um, World Net Daily Exclusive called This Ain't No Tea Party. Uh, it says, See Rebellion at Grassroots. Watch Congressional Greetings at Town Hall Meetings at Home. Uh, the writer of this story says, A rebellion is brewing in home congressional districts of incumbent Democrats, evidenced by the reaction at several town hall meetings. So what happens is, all these congressmen are going home for their break. And they're going home and they're having these little meetings to sell their agenda. And used to be, people didn't care because things were going okay in the country. Now these guys are showing up at these town hall meetings that are not in the, um, that are not in the senators' or representatives' pockets. These are normal people who have a right to show up at meetings and voice their opinions. And we're going to have some, I want to play some videos of some of the things that people are saying at these meetings. These congressmen 
they should start getting nervous. In fact, let me read the story. Members are being forced to suspend meetings with their constituents. Screaming protesters are being dragged out of events by police and officials are being greeted by protest signs and chants. Uh, Representative Tim Bishop, a Democrat of New York, has called off further events. He said, I felt they would be pointless. He said, there's no point in meeting with my constituents and to listen to them and to have them listen to you if what is basically an unruly mob prevents you from having an intelligent conversation. Now, if I was one of uh, Congressman Bishop's constituents and I was at one of his meetings and he called me unruly and unintelligent, I think I might be offended at something like that, wouldn't you? So anyway, but that's, that's what he said. So he's called off all of his meetings, and I'll, and I'll show you why. Let me, uh, let me show you a clip here, uh, just segments of it. I'm going to edit it, but just segments of this video clip of what happened at Congressman Bishop's last meeting. Take a look. Silent no more! Silent no more! Silent no more! Silent These people are here because they're mad. These people are here because this man's not representing them. Look up and down the block. They know that if we come to the streets and we call him on it. To show that Tim Bishop is just a rubber stamp for Nancy Pelosi, which basically, if you know that Tim Bishop has this, the same agenda as she does, people know exactly where he stands. We know that what's going on in Washington is bad for the country, and if we don't act locally, then we're turning our country over to these people, and it's not we're not going to let that happen here. What we're all about is getting out here getting in front of uh, uh, his face, getting in front of the cameras, and as well as giving these people a voice. We want a country back! No more! Silent 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 no more! I have a nice little pension, and I don't want to be taxed for others to pay for other people's health care. We have 47 million people. For 35 years, I pay a percentage of my health care, and I like it. It's good. I don't want to be shoved into a, a, a government-run, run socialistic health care. Social security is on the point of insolvency. Yet we want the government to take more of that on. The government can't run a free lunch properly. And to, and to tax me, to pay for health care for other people, we're already overburdened. Sir, and we're not even talking about the tax rate. VA health care system is a system that runs quite well. Ask VA. Are that... you a veteran? No, I'm not. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there as a vet? I said no. Cap and trade had me scared to death. Yeah. I'm giving the children to the children. We already have the highest electric rates in the country. The overwhelming weight of the evidence, the scientific evidence, is that global warming is real? No. And that no. Today, China is building one coal plant a week and belching it out without controls for their electricity. There is something like a jet stream. It'll bring it to us, but we're going to be environmentally correct while we send their goods over on the boat. Right. Yeah. What we have is a bad problem. There is no little bit, because you will use the progressive thing that you're going to save the planet. On the east end, which is your constituency, not Manhattan, you have a fishing trade. They will pay for those motors and those 500 horsepower engines. You have a farming trade. They will pay for those old tractors because they can't afford to buy a new tractor. Right. Neither can your fishing people. 
buy tier three motors, which cost an extra 20 grand. But they don't have the money to buy it. But you're going to tell them, we're going to make your area green. You have green to make, they'll have grass grown. You won't have agriculture, you won't have tourism, you won't have boat industry, and you won't have fishing. And that's your district. I don't care what the is. These people are angry. They're upset. And they're voicing their opinion. Listen, we have a right in this country to voice our opinions to our rep The word representative, what does that mean? Who do they represent? Should they represent the, the, the big car companies? Should they represent all the labor unions? Or should they represent the will of the common people? Amen? The people that, that we elected them to represent us. This is the United States of America. Not the United Corporations of America. And this guy's getting nervous because of what's going on there. Uh, let, me, let me read some more here. In Bishop's case, his decision came on the heels of a June 22nd event he held in uh, Setauket, New York. Hope I pronounced that white. In which protesters dominated the meeting by shouting criticisms at the congressman for his positions on energy policy, health care, and the bailout of the auto industry. Police had to be called to escort the 59-year-old Democrat to his car safely. Hoorah! Uh, Representative Keith Ellison, Democrat of Minnesota, got an earful too, especially on the health care issue. Uh, let's see, it's not just members of the House who are getting lectured. Senator Claire McCaskill, Democrat of Missouri, heard from a very well-informed veteran to the enthusiastic applause of all those gathered. I want to play that clip too. Watch what happened when Representative Lloyd Doggett, Democrat of Texas, went out to meet constituents recently. Take a look at this video. Representative Ellison, are you willing to put your family in this government system which is different from the one you currently use? If you are not willing to put your family in the system, why should the rest of us? All right, next point. Well, answer the question. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Congressman Ellison. Uh, I just want to say there's not one program that the government has stuck its fingers in, its hands in, including welfare, including Medicare, including Medicaid, that has worked. Our disproportions are because we are being pimped and we are being used, and they are not going to get it any better taking care of your life. Thank you. Uh, seems to be all over the country, the article continues. At a healthcare town hall event in Syracuse, New York, in July, I'm making fun of these New York people, ain't I? It's a good thing, they don't talk like us down here. At a, health, <laughs> at a healthcare town hall event in Syracuse, New York, in July, police were called in to restore order and at least one heckler was taken away by local police. Close to 100 sign-carrying protesters greeted Representative Alan Boyd, Democrat of Florida, at a late June Community College Small Business Development Forum in Panama City, Florida last week. Uh, last week, uh, Danville, Virginia, anti-tax Tea Party activists claimed they were refused an opportunity to ask Representative Thomas uh, Perillo, Democrat of Virginia, a question at a town hall event instructed by a plainclothes police officer to leave the property after they attempted to hold up protest signs. There's another one I'm going to show you. Senator Carl Levin, Democrat of Michigan, was chased today. Listen to this. He was chased away by a crowd. Hey, and this was, I, and I have to admit, when you see the video, you're going to see this. I mean, I would have been scared too. I would have been out of my mind scared had I, as an, an elected American politician, showed up to a meeting where people were going to be gathered, of the United, United States citizens, and they scared him away, guess what they did? They began to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, God. indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And as soon as the crowd started doing that, he got scared and left. Take a look at that.
The biggest source of protests are the health care bill, the $787 billion economic stimulus package, the cap and trade legislation. We've dealt with those and we'll continue to deal with those on this broadcast. They're also angry about Barack Obama's refusal. Listen to this. They're also angry about Barack Obama's refusal to release his birth certificate to prove he is a natural born citizen and constitutionally eligible to serve in the White House. Somebody sent me this the other day. This is our own Russ Carnahan. This is, this is actually our district, our district's representative to the, to, the, uh, to the House of Representatives was speaking at a meeting locally here in the St. Louis area on health care and take a look at, take a, listen to what somebody said. The overall cost of the package has been estimated at about a trillion dollars over 10 years. About half of that comes from savings and inefficiencies in the system. Part of that has, part of that, Congressional Budget Office most recently uh, came out and uh, analyzed the current plan and said that it was not only deficit neutral, which has been one of the uh, important factors for the president and congressional leaders, but also that over 10 years it would create a $6 billion surplus. So the, it's important when you have the larger pools, uh, we also have the ability to uh, spread and shrink those administrative costs so that a larger portion of our health care dollar is actually going to treating the patient as opposed to administrative cost. Novel concept. Uh, but uh, it's a very important part of, of creating those larger pools. It's so good, why does the Congress the, have to um, be on it? The, uh, yeah. the, uh, I don't know, uh, Anyway, Russ Carnahan at this meeting here in St. Louis, at St. Louis, I think it's uh, St. Louis College, uh, talking about how good health care is and how it's going to save money, and everybody started laughing. And as he's giving his speech at the same forum, he's talking about how good this health care bill is going to be, and someone from the crowd said, if it's so good, why doesn't Congress have to be on it? And that's the thing. This health care bill doesn't apply to congressmen. They're actually going to get better health care because, you know, they're superior people. Kathleen Sibelius, who is the head of the uh, Health and Human Services, uh, was at a meeting, and you, and you got to see this gal. She's talking, and somebody, somebody grabs a microphone in the back and says this. It'll be a cold day in hell before he socializes my country. Excuse me. Excuse me. The federal employee health system would stay in place, as would other employer-based coverage. What this guy said was, it'll be a cold day in hell before he socializes my country. And the crowd just, uh, just jumped in applause and roar. And yet her reaction is... <sighs> yeah. Whatever. Congressman Mike Castle of Delaware. And this is uh, how he handled a, a deal on Obama's birth certificate. Take a listen to this. Congressman um, Castle, I want to know, I have a birth certificate here from the United States of America saying I am an American citizen with a seal on it. Signed by a doctor with the hospital administrator's name, my parents, my date of birth, the time, the date. I want to go back to January 20th, and I want to know why are you people ignoring his birth certificate?
one, one comment uh, that that invites. Uh, the, if you're referring to the, the president there, he is a citizen of the United States. People are not just sitting at home anymore, letting this stuff pass. You know, I'm glad to see, I'm glad to see that we live in a country where freedom like this can be exercised, and now we're at a position where it should be exercised. I do not want to live in a socialistic country. My main reason, believe it or not, my main reason for not wanting to live in a socialist America is that God has given me a responsibility and that responsibility is to tell the truth to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to warn people when danger is coming that's the responsibility that God has given me God has given this church overall and anytime there is a socialistic slash communistic government that rules the roost free speech goes out the door and we already are being threatened by this, um, by this hate crimes legislation that they, here, remember I said it, they, they hid it inside this little bill and it's going to be passed. It's going to be the law of the land. And I'm telling you, there are enough, there are enough camouflage wearing people, that looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> camouflage wearing people in this country that are not going to just sit down and let these guys run all over the top of them. What is our country going to be like in one year, two years, four years from now? How much more are they going to try to do before the 2010 election when these guys who are in office right now, if I were them, I would be, I would be scared about my job. Because everywhere you go, when they have these rallies, they're saying, you're fired! And I've said it on this broadcast before, and I'll say it again. When it comes time for the next election, I don't care who's in office, they're going to go home as far as I'm concerned. I'm voting everybody out. I don't care who they are, Republican, Democrat, I don't care. If they're in office right now, they've had their chance, sit down, let somebody else go in. Somebody say amen. Now here's, here's where it's getting, we're going to get to this here in just a second. Here's where it's getting interesting. Democrats win approval of health bill, health bill in committee. You've heard that this health care bill has been kind of, uh, well, you know, Obama wanted to pass by August and it didn't happen and, and some people are trying to let on, you know, that, you know, it's going to go away. Well, a, a, a committee, in fact, let me read the story. In a triumph for President Barack, let me read it like this. In a triumph for President Barack Obama, Democrats narrowly pushed sweeping health care legislation through a key congressional committee Friday night and cleared the way for a September showdown in the House. The 31 to 28 vote in the House Energy and Commerce Committee along party lines was weeks uh, later than either the White House or Democratic leaders had hoped. As part of a last minute service of a series of changes, the committee agreed to cap increases in the cost of insurance sold under the bill and also give the federal government authority to negotiate directly with drug companies for lower prices under Medicare. In other words, they made some concessions in order to get the thing passed, but they're going to get the thing passed. Um, here is, uh, we talked about Russ Carnahan, who is our representative. Uh, here is what he says. This is from his website on, uh, on the health insurance reform bill that's on the U.S. floor. He said, those with and without health insurance share something in common. They both lack stability and security when it comes to coverage. Now, I'm, I'm going to stop right here. Who in here has health insurance? How many of you are, how many of you have, who have health insurance, it's real shaky and iffy whether or not you're going to get anything paid or not? Anybody? No. I have health, in fact, I went to the ER Wednesday night after church to have my knee looked at, a little infection on here, went in there, pumped me full of drugs, sent me home, everything worked. I gave them my card, everything worked. It's fine. I don't have a problem with my health care insurance. I don't have a problem with it. And let me ask you this. Do you have a problem with your health insurance company making money? Anybody have a problem with that? What happens when they make money? Do what? Prices should go down. Okay? If health insurance companies are losing money, they can't insure you. They cannot pay their bills. This is going to be an attack 
First of all, on health insurance companies. They're saying they're making money. We shouldn't, in America, no one should be allowed to make a profit. That's what these people believe. No one should be allowed except the federal government. But anyway, they both lack stability and security when it comes to coverage, cost, and quality of their health care. Everyday Americans are forced into tough decisions and circumstances that lead them to lose their health care. As the president mentioned last night, an average 14,000 Americans a day are losing their health care. Health insurance reform means stable coverage that can't be taken away. In other words, it's going to come, health insurance is going to go from something that you can work for and earn to something that they say you have a right to. It's going to be an entitlement. If your spouse is laid off or, your cha or changes jobs, you won't lose your coverage. No, what will happen is if under this bill, and we're going to look at some things here in a little bit, under this bill, if you change insurance policies, you immediately get kicked over to the government health care system. Period. The end. Uh, let's see here. With health insurance reform, no one is able to get between you and your doctor. Who has a problem getting to the doctor that has health insurance right now? Who in here that does not have health insurance has a problem getting to the doctor? See, I think this is, I, th I think it's bogus. No one is able to get between you and your doctor. It will keep government out of health care decisions. When the government gets involved in something, do they get involved in the decision making? They're telling us this. They're telling us this. Why well, I shouldn't have got all excited about this. They're telling us this. Now, here it is. The government bailed out the banks. That's the government getting involved in the banks. Did the government then tell the banks how to do their business? Yes. The government bailed out GM and Chrysler. Is the government... The very first thing that happened was they made the president of GM quit. They, the government fired him. They're making the decisions for the banks. They're making the decisions for the car companies. They're making this, the decisions for the housing industry. And now Russ Carnahan and all these other guys are telling you that if the government gets involved in health care, it will not make the decisions. They are lying through their teeth. i got to move on. We have this. I'm going to post this on our website. Uh, one of our watchers sent me this. Thank you for that. I don't remember who you are, but thank you anyway for that. This is uh, from the Liberty Council, a nationwide public interest religious civil liberties law firm. And this is just a brief outline. You know, this thing's about a thousand pages. And this is an outline of what the current health care bill, as it stands right now, is going to change inside America. And you remember, Barack Obama ran on a ticket that he was going to fundamentally change the United States of America. When you fundamentally change America, you change what is the foundation of America. Number one, it's this. Number two, it's the Constitution of the United States. And I believe that he, that he wants to fundamentally change what is the foundation and definition of the United States of America. He's doing it through the stimulus bills. He's doing it through the takeover of the housing industry. He's doing it through the takeover of the car companies. He's doing it through cap and trade. He's going to do it through health care. The government is going to be running a vast majority of the economy of our country. But let's take a look. As I'm, I only uh, there's probably I don't know a hundred some odd points in here. I'm only going to deal with 75 of them, so we'll get done pretty quick here. Uh, on page one, and like I said, we're going to try to post this on our website, and you can download this. Uh, page one here of your little handout. Everybody's got one. Raise them up here. So let everybody see you got a little handout. Here, okay, you're an informed church. Uh, section 113. But the health care bill mandates a government audit of the books of all employers that self-insure in order to ensure that the law does not provide incentives for small and mid-sized employers to self -insure. In other words, if you run a business and you self-insure yourself as part of that business, the government has a right to audit your books. Okay? Uh, section 122. Your health care will be rationed. Every other country that has government-run health care rations their health care. 
Section 123, there will, there will be a government committee deciding what treatments and benefits you get. Section 142, the Health Choices Commissioner will choose your benefits for you. You have no choice. Section 152, health care will be, will be provided to all non-U.S. citizens. Now it says non-U.S. citizens. That's, kind of, that's, that's a misprint. It has to be. Because the health care bill will be, the health care will be provided to anybody in the borders of the United States, whether they are here legally or not. What's that going to do? Everybody in every country is going to come into this country and get hooked into our live for free system. They're going to get government, government subsidized housing. They're going to get government food. They're going to get government welfare. And they're going to get government health care. And they won't have to work a day for it. And they definitely, you see, they can't pay taxes. They're not citizens and they're not supposed to be here working. So how can they pay taxes? That's what this... Ha and by the way, there was a meeting. There was a meeting in one of these committees. And the Republicans said... And I think there are still a few guys in Congress that are again going, this is not right. They actually tried to amend this in a committee to say, we want the language change to not apply to illegal aliens. The Democratic-controlled committee said, forget that. And they kicked it out. So the health care bill, as it is right now, will cover everybody that's in this country illegally. When Barack Obama comes out and says that 45 million Americans right now don't have health insurance, 25 million of those Americans are in this country illegally, and they don't deserve government health insurance. That's what's going on. Uh, section 150, uh, 163, government will have real-time access to individuals' finances, and a national ID health card will be issued. Bingo! I think we're getting close to something here. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. That's what this health care bill covers. The small and the great, the rich and the poor, and the free and the bond. To receive a mark on the right hand or forehead. Now, this health care issue and the card that they get will not be the mark of the beast. Okay? But it lays the groundwork. Okay? Lays the groundwork. Section 163, government will have access to your bank accounts for electronic funds transfer. I mean, if you think that's a good idea. Oh, come on. Come on. They're not... They're not going to steal your money. The government wouldn't do that. Would they... Uh, let's see, uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Section 164 is a payoff subsidized plan for retirees and their families in unions and community organizations. One of those is ACORN. ACORN, if you've never done any research on ACORN, they are, they are the most... ACORN is a government-run mafia, is what it is. It's a community organization. They have, like, tentacles all over the country. They get billions of dollars, both privately and publicly, and ACORN is going to be subsidized by your tax dollars through health care. Section 201, government is creating a health care exchange to bring private plans under government control. On the back page here, page 2, down toward the bottom, any non-resident, uh, Section 59B, any non-resident alien is exempt from individual taxes. Section 431, officers and employees of health care administration will have access to all Americans' financial and personal records. Section, uh, let's see here, on page 3, section 1121. Doctors, it does not matter what specialty you have, you'll be all be paid the same. Service categories established under this paragraph shall apply without regard to the specialty of the physician furnishing the service. In other words, your, um, your highly skilled heart surgeon will be paid the exact same amount of money as your family practitioner is. And believe it or not, there's people in this country that have been duped into believing, oh, that's a good idea. Why should they get more money? Why should they get more money? Because they hold people's lives in their hands. And they're good at it. Most of them are good at it. And I think they should be paid for it. The servant is worthy of his hire, the Bible says. 
Section 1151. The government will penalize hospitals for what government deems preventable readmissions. Uh, section 1 of 1156. Prohibition on physician ownership or investment. In this town, in order to save money, a group of doctors got together and opened up their own surgical, outpatient surgical unit here in town. How many of you ever had a procedure done there? I have. Okay. My wife has. They opened that up there and it's outside of the hospital under the new health plan. They will not be able to do that anymore. Okay. Section 1162, the government mandates establishment of outcome-based measures, which basically means rationing. On page 4, section 1233, government will instruct and consult regarding living wills and durable powers of attorney. Mandatory end-of-life planning. There's all kinds. I'm not going to go into it. There are all kinds of really scary provisions in this plan that regard old people. Basically, and you can believe this or not, there are some scary, scary people that Obama has picked to be czars over different areas of our government. And some of these people believe in euthanasia, mercy killing, taking old people who are critically ill, let them die. These people say, let them die, let them go. Okay? Somebody's 73 years old, they've got cancer, but they need heart surgery. Nah, they're not going to get heart surgery, they got can they're going to die of cancer. And they're going to let these people go. This is not the America that I believe in. This is not the kind of country that I want to live in. And I'll live here till I die. But I won't like it. Uh, let's see here. So, page 5, section 1308. The government will cover marriage and family therapy. This will involve government control of your marriage. Page 6, section 1442. Quality measures shall be designed to profile you, including race, age, gender, and place of residence. In other words, you'll be targeted if you live in a what's called a poor area. You'll be targeted. Page 7, section 1711. Here we go. No more bratwurst. Section 1711, the government will require preventative services, including vaccinations. If you're on the government health care program and a vaccination comes around, you have to take the vaccination. In fact, if you enroll in the government program, you have to do whatever they tell you to do. It's about that much control. It's not. This, this has nothing to do with we the people. It has nothing to do with we the people. Section 1713, nurse home visit services. Service number one, improving maternal or child health and pregnancy outcomes or increasing birth intervals between pregnancies. Somebody tell me what that looks like to you. Increasing birth intervals between pregnancies. Forced abortions. And there is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that once this plan is in effect, you, the taxpayer, will be funding abortions all throughout this country. And the way this reads, and we, we know for a fact, we know from hundreds of years of government control that once the government controls this much, then they start controlling this much. And it just goes from there. And what we're going to see happen in this country is that the government's going to get in, they're going to start paying for everyone's abortion, and then at some point, we're going to end up being Chinese. Let's see, they already own half the country anyway. Uh, we own half, by the way, isn't it, isn't it fair that China owns half the country since we own half of their produced merchandise? I was, you know, got to be fair. Um... But China has this birth outcomes thing. You're allowed to have one child in China. And after that, if you end up pregnant, sorry, we're going to kill your baby. And the government pays for it. And everybody goes along with it. And if you dissent in China, they put you in a prison somewhere. Is that what's going to happen in the United States of America? I could keep going on. I'd like to say, I'm going to try to send this to jazz. 
our trusty website coordinator. See if she can't get this posted on here. I'm, I'm just going to close with this before I, before I go on. I, I believe in being a Christian about all this. Can I hear you say amen? I really do. I believe that we ought to be Christians first and patriots second. I don't plan on turning these people in this church into a militia. Even though we like to wear our hats. I have some people in this church that are afraid of guns. Don't like them. Okay? So I don't plan on turning us into a militia. I don't plan on telling everybody, let's, let's get our guns and our ammo now because the government's going to come and get us. And That's not why we're here and that's not really the Christian response. The Christian response is to pray. Pray like we never have before. And I'll be honest with you. Our founding fathers said that our Constitution was written for a virtuous people. And of course the Constitution doesn't work anymore because the vast majority of this country, including most of our elected officials, are not virtuous people anymore. You know, I preached to this church this morning what I put on the broadcast last week is that judgment begins at the house of God first. Before God judges the world, He's going to judge America. But before God judges America, He's going to judge the church in America. But before He judges the whole church in America, He's going to judge individual churches. And then He's going to judge in our homes. But it all starts right here in Mike Hoggard's heart. What kind of Christian am I? What kind of prayer am I? What kind of student of the Word of God am I? That's the question that I leave you with this week. The Bible says, watch unto prayer. And if we're to be watchmen on the wall and warning this country and warning the world about what's going to take place, when we pray, let's make sure that we are praying for ourselves first. You've enjoyed having you? Everybody enjoyed being here? Say amen. Turn around wait. This is Pastor Mike. We'll see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.